in the new bull market, typically the categories of stocks, not every single stock, but the categories that got hit the hardest, bounced the most for about eight to 13 months. So, you know, I get these client questions. I'm going to rattle off some client questions and some short answers. First, why do you wave your hands around so much? Well, you know, just easier for me. I just am who I am. Uh, some people, that seems to really bother. Uh, you know what you do if you want to understand what I'm saying and my waving my hands around really bothers you? Uh, just don't look. Just listen. It's easy. Don't get all left up. The next one, which similarly applies, is do you dye your hair? I mean, how, how can you be as old as you are, a septuagenarian, and you're not bald and, and, and you don't have any gray hair? Well, actually, if you're really close to me and you got good eyesight, you can see I do have some gray hairs. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, and I'm just going to say this, we're all different. And I got really good hair genes. I got them from my father. My father, when he was in, eight, in his 80s, was almost completely black hair. By the time he died at 96, he was still two-thirds black hair, only about one-third gray. And uh, so, you know, I, I got my own deficiencies genetically, but, uh, but, but the hair isn't one of them. Uh, one question is recently I, I've said that the bank lending costs are nearly zero in America. They're averaging 33 basis points, uh, regardless of the interest rate hikes of the central bank. And where can I find evidence of that information? The easiest way to do it is to look online and just do a search for average savings account rates in America. And that'll take you close. It's the easiest one. As long as banks and credit card companies keep lending, won't then inflation continue? Uh, and why would it stop under these conditions? Well, first, I've never said it would stop. In fact, the idiots at the central banks, excuse me, the people at the central banks, I didn't mean to be redundant, the people at the central banks have never said they mean to get inflation to stop. They mean to get inflation to go to about 2%. Now, regardless of what they end up doing, don't end up doing, mean to do, don't mean to do, and what ends up actually happening, nobody's talking about stopping inflation. They're just having the rate of it decrease. I will say, and I've said this many times before, the rate of increase over the course of a number of months from now is going to be a feature of what input costs to our manufacturing sectors were some number of months ago, like maybe about six, seven of them. It varies a little over time. Those costs have been coming down, therefore inflation will irregularly come down ahead because the input costs through a process of manufacturing and service lead to the output costs. The ongoing lending keeps the economy from getting too bad. Now, in America, the lending rates, the growth rates have been very high. They're moderating now and rolling over a little, but still high. The fact is there are two more things to think about in this. One, overseas, they're lower. Still positive, but lower. So what really matters is the global rate. And then these numbers are not inflation adjusted. So you have to take the inflation out of the total lending number because what's really important is the net lending on top of the inflation. And that number right now on a global basis is running about 3%. What am I saying? What I'm saying is that I don't think that the central banks doing what they're doing right now naturally get you to a permanent 2% or less inflation rate, but they move you toward a 3% inflation rate where they are right now in the not terribly distant future within 2023. And that's, if you will, to pardon the, uh, the phrase, close enough for government work. As they approach that, they can't tell if they're hitting their job or not. Uh, so I do think inflation will keep falling. I don't think it'll stop. But the reality is the net lending growth over the inflation rate on a global basis, and it's global that matters because we live in a global world. If you take almost anything 
that's a complicated thing, any kind of complicated thing, it's got parts from all over the world and some of which have gone back and forth and forth before they get assembled into the final thing. Inflation ought to come down, but not every month, not every week, irregularly, and people have a hard time with it because it's not like prices are reversing and going to back where they used to be. That's disinflation, and we don't really do much of that in our Western world. Assuming tech stocks rebound more than others at the beginning of a new bull market, when does it make sense to rotate to other value-oriented sectors and their industries? What industries and sectors might those be? So let me just talk about the bounce effect really quickly. Off the bottom of a market, in a bear market, in the new bull market, typically the categories of stocks, not every single stock, but the categories that got hit the hardest bounce the most for about 8 to 13 months. Sometimes they start off a little faster, sometimes a little slower. You wouldn't find that very surprising now, would you? But after about three months off the bottom, past I mean, where we are now and more, having the market hit its bottom in October, that bounce effect gets stronger and stronger until it more or less peaks and stops. That's the time you'd expect those categories that got hurt the most, like tech, to bounce back the most. Now, after that, sometimes they continue to lead, but they usually don't. They got hammered the most in the bear market usually because they've done really well in the prior bull market and over the same themselves. This is where your question becomes apt because you say what other categories might do well. And the uh, feature is in that time period, which is leading into the middle, the beginning of the middle of a bull market, you typically get luxury goods continuing to do well. Energy is 50-50 then. Banks often do well. Banks, I'm not necessarily referencing the rest of the financial services, but in a rising market, a lot of the rest of the financial services do too because they're linked off to capital markets pricing. And then industrials, and particularly any kind of industrials with a growth-oriented bent, particularly those feeding into consumer durables, products that will cost you a fair amount, you don't really have to buy them, versus consumer staples, which are the more defensive ones, uh, food, clothing, etc. So that's where you would look. That's uh, where you should think to be then. But that isn't now. And if you like these videos that I do, I'll be back doing more of these grab bag things. And I'm sure there'll be this question coming up in varied ways month after month after month. The final and last one that I got for now off of this week is, can two different styles, growthy tech, or just growthy in general, and value-oriented sectors perform well at the same time in the beginning of a bull market. Now, you know why they give me these cards with this big print on them? Because I'm not supposed to do this stuff with my glasses on. And at my age, I can't read the print if they don't make it big like this for me. It's, it's the hair, it's the waving hands, and, and you know, I gotta, gotta uh, what does that say? So the, the fact is, yes, in fact, categories where one typically does the reverse of the other, can also, like growthy stocks and value stocks, can also do similarly well over a sustained period. There's no law rule um, that says anywhere, any place, that categories have to be widely desperate in their returns. One has to beat the market by a lot while the other likes the market by a lot. If one leaves the market by a lot, the other one probably does lag it by a lot, but they can perform very similarly. And this year, I don't expect overall in the year to see growth and value with hugely different returns. Thank you for listening to my grab bag questions and answers, and I hope you want to uh, listen to the next section of them when we do it again, probably next month. Take care. Subscribe to the Fisher Investment YouTube channel if you like what you've seen. Click the bell to be notified as soon as we publish new videos.